up y'all it's your girl sakina and i'm back with another review this is my review for ready to love this is season nine episode two sorry for the delay as y'all know i am on auntie duty and you know it's just a busy lifestyle as of right now so i took a minute to even get this together but i finally have some free time to take notes for ready to love so here we are i'm obviously not on camera today just because it's easier for me to get this out it's midnight at this point so i just need to hurry up and get this uploaded and up to y'all because this episode was really good so i do want to go ahead and get into it so it picks up where it left off last week between habibi and brandon being the two in the bottom that actually sent brandon home the thing about Brandon, yes, he's attractive, but he has a lot of baggage. He's freshly divorced and he has four children. That's just too much for somebody to have to deal with. And at that point, you just really need to heal and take care of your kids before you jump into something like a relationship and to be on a reality show. That's just a whole lot to be doing. Absolutely not, Brandon. So for that reason, he got sent home. Now, Habibi is delusional and he thinks that he has connections with an S. And I'm like, you only really have one, which is Tequila. So I don't know where this S is coming from. But he also says the ones that he don't have a connection with, that's their fault. Um, okay. Now I'm sure they're perfectly fine with not being your connection. So the next thing we see is them at the brunch. And the ladies are actually bringing the looks, okay? I was feeling it. You know, uh, these <laughs> recent seasons of ready to love the ladies have not been bringing it with the fashion or the hair so and the makeup but the ladies are looking put together like i said the last time the ladies were bringing the total package as a whole meaning you know personality clothes makeup hair was in houston so i'm happy to see that the ladies in texas know how to bring the looks together the only person that i really didn't care for was unique i was not feeling her outfit and as far as the guys, Marvin, please, that little hoodie thing that you had on your ball head, remove it. So Tommy gathers everybody around to talk. And I'm like, wait, Tommy, can you say what you need to say at the beginning of the brunch? Because you're literally getting people up out of their seats with food on their plates. Uh-uh, wait till I'm, get, I'm done eating or tell me beforehand. But anyway, it's the ladies' week to send a man home. And uh, we see everybody mixing and mingling. So Lee, she speaks with Marvin about his dominance and it's really some 50 shades of gray shit, okay? He got restraints, he got paddles, he got chains, he got a whole bunch of stuff. So he's telling Jessica that if his partner isn't into it, then, you know, eventually the, their part, his partner does get on board with it. And he also does live shows. I'm like, okay, is this with your partner, these live shows? It sounds like it, but I don't know. And then I'm like, this is, you know, a lot of sex. Obviously, he's very um, adamant about that. But it seems like it's his personality. And that's the problem for me. Yes, you want to give the women forewarning what you're into so they know what they're getting into. But yeah, it's definitely becoming your personality. And then again, where are you doing these live shows? Do you have an OnlyFans? I'm confused. I need answers. So it's a no for Jessica. But we see Marvin speak to Unique. And he makes her nervous, but she likes his dominance and his confidence. I say, yeah, mm -hmm, you won't like it until you get into that dungeon, okay? But, you know, she actually might like that because she was getting real giddy around him. So you never know. She might got that real freaky side to her. Who knows? But we already know she is really intrigued. Uh, Tequila and Habibi, the two delusional people of the group. That's his partner in crime. I said, okay, child, y'all definitely some Bonnie and Clyde type of people. Because I just, I don't understand the, the hype that y'all have between each other. But like I said, it's more so strategic on her baby's end. So we see that he's talking to Sierra and he wants to know why she fucked up her last relationship. I said, yes, another red flag. Because how do you know it was her fault? I really think that he had been hurt by a woman. Because look at his questions. Uh, the questions that he asks in order to get to know them is just very left field. The first one that we seen him ask was, you know, would you cheat on me with any guy in this room or who would you cheat on me with in this room? And now he's asking, what did you do to mess up the relationship? I don't know. It's just, it's just very weird. And he was saying that he was being facetious, but to me, I feel like his approach is terrible. And I really think that he was serious. 
Now, Sierra says that he is a bit too much, but she's feeling where the chemistry is going and she feels like they're in tune with each other. I'm like, okay, you and Tequila, y'all both letting this head wrap cover y'all's eyes because I just don't, I don't see it. But anyway, he secured another one, child, so have at it. So we see Red talking to Unique. He's still upset about her saying that he had a thought job. And he was like, yes, the last conversation that we had, it ended on bad terms. And she thinks that it didn't start good. But I'm like, how not? He wasn't being disrespectful to you or anything. So I'm not understanding where she feels like they didn't start on good terms. You started with him. He didn't start with you. So I'm confused. Um but she said that she didn't mean to offend him, but she did reiterate that, yes, she thinks that he has a thought job. So he throws it back at her and was like, well, you can't say that we have the same job, but then say what I do is a thought job. So at this point, baby, you a thought too. And she walks away from the conversation, but it's like, yeah, I understand because Unique was saying in her confessional, it's funny how the comedian, the biggest comedian in Dallas, so obviously he has a name for himself in the community, but she said the biggest comedian in Dallas is taking offense to what she's saying. But it's like, yeah, he's a comedian, but if he thinks what you said was offensive, then, you know, it's offensive. If he would have started with you saying that you had a thought job, it would have been a problem. So, yeah, let's not act like what you're saying Um is just supposed to be taken lighthearted. If he said that it offended him, then it offended him. She said that she apologized, but I don't recall her doing that. Y'all let me know. I just don't remember that. So we move on to this dating, um, this group date. They went bowling and it's Tequila, Kira, Janelle, Red, Philip, and Habibi. So Tequila says that she has a bone to pick with Phil. She said that she tried to connect with him, but he pulled away. And Phil was like, yeah, I pulled away because you came for me about the sex questions that you asked. Like, you seem to have a problem with questions that you asked. Phil didn't say anything sexually to her to make her ask these questions. These are things that you created. So now all of a sudden, you feeling like he pulled away. But you were definitely giving facial expressions as if you were bothered by the things that, you, that he was saying. So, girl, please. So, Janelle comes in and Tequila is asking her. Um, you know, what con connections has she made? She made a connection with Red. Sequilla also made a connection with Red. So, you know, it's like, mm, okay, well, you know, let the games begin. It's a little competition between the two ladies and, you know, the whole Red situation. I said, oh, okay. So Red obviously been putting a lot of work in the background. So Kira then asked Habibi, who are you feeling the least? I'm like, dang, okay, y'all asking questions like y'all Tommy. <laughs> but... Janella says that she wants to know who he's actually feeling because she's unsure. And Janelle says that she really doesn't see it for her baby because he actually made some offensive comment to her off camera. Now she's saying this in her confessional and she said that, you know, she really doesn't have anything to say to him. But I just thought it was funny that he doesn't recall having a conversation with her when they actually did. And he said something to where she doesn't want to repeat it. I said, see, that's that self absorbness You're not even aware that y'all had a conversation or whatever you said offended her. But moving on. Kira and Red, they're doing some flirting because at this point they're doing like that football bowling thing where it's pins and you throw the football at it. That never excite, excited me. I've seen people do that. They have a place here in Atlanta that you could do that. But I'm just like, what's the reason? Like, I'd just rather go and play bowling regular bowling i don't want to have to throw a football it just doesn't seem um amusing but anyway uh they're doing that and they're doing a whole lot of flirting that janelle is not feeling and she let it be known red is like mm, okay i got your attention i think he liked that but we see head rap aka habibi talking to tequila and he's like how do you feel about me being a saxophonist he said that he travels a lot and um tequila is like well i want to know how you manage relationships and he said, I just find a woman whenever I want it. So she was like, oh, so you be cheating. He said, absolutely, because his ex didn't give head. Excuse me? And then he was like, but you know, I grew from it. Yeah, I doubt it. He said that he didn't like having a mark on his canvas and, you know, the way that he hurt the woman. So he, he doesn't want to have that image on him. I'm like, mm, I don't I don't buy it. But, of course, Tequila 
is eating it up. So back over to the game that's being played between Kira Red, Phil, and Janelle. Janelle is very jealous of Red and Kira's flirting. And she's even taking shots at Kira. I'm like, ma'am, can you relax? Because that territorial spirit that you have is coming on a little too soon. That I mean, that could be a red flag for somebody because it's like, girl, please. We know that you have abandonment issues, but for you to be claiming territory like that on red to the point where you're trying to come for Kira, I don't like that. So we see Kira and her baby talking and he says that he's a cheater. I was like, oh, but I thought you changed though. Yes, he just does absolutely too much. So he still has to quill up around his finger where he wants her. And they leave. That leaves Janelle and Red together to have some one-on-one time. Red said that he did vibe with her the most out of everybody. I said, mm, okay, but you was doing a whole lot of flirting with Kira, which is fine. But, you know, you was picking her up and you had your hands on her waist and stuff. I was like, mm, okay, Red, you real touchy-feely. And Kira seemed to not mind it. But, like I said, Janelle wasn't feeling it. And as they were walking out, she throws another shade tree at kira now she wasn't there for this one but as they were walking out she tells red you know kira's bag is fake mine is real girl now you making me not like you now because you're doing unnecessary stuff nobody gives a damn that you walking around with a real bag and hers is fake you sound like a pick me girl chill out because i'm on the verge of not liking you based on the way that you handling this red and kira thing it's not called for anyway we get on down to Aries house. She said that she likes to host. So she has Jessica, Sierra, Quentin, Chris, and Herbert over to her house. <laughs> Mind you, everybody is dressed the same pretty much, right? Everybody got the denim memo. So Herbert walks in and he has a sweater on and he said in his confessional, everybody looked like a Gap commercial. But Sierra, she looked like adult Gap, women's Gap. And I don't know why that made me laugh because, yes, yeah, she hers was a little adult. You know, she had her cheeks out a little bit and wore her little cowboy boots. I said, oh, okay, girl. So uh, Sierra is talking to Herbert and she wants to know, does he believe in sex before marriage? Yes, he does. And she feels the same way about it, but she has been absent it for a year. So Herbert was saying, why are you looking at me like that? Are you doing it here? Yes, I am. Why? I thought you was in a room on the phone. Not anymore. What's wrong? You supposed to take care of her bath. I'm going to give him a bath. What's wrong? You want to give him a bath? Do you wash your I'm going to give him a bath in a minute. I'm doing a video. Can you close my door, please? Okay, thank you, Miss Bossy. Child, I thought they was in there watching TV. She coming in, walking past my door, giving me the stare. She got an attitude with me because I ain't give her brother a bath yet. Girl. Anywho, where was I at? Yes, uh, she said that she's been practicing abstinence for a year. And Herbert really ain't feeling that. But I'm like, please, sir, can you calm down and get to know her first before you start trying to, you know write her off because she's practicing abstinence i can't stand stuff like that so jessica is talking to chris and she said that she heard some rumblings about an arranged marriage so she wanted to ask him about that he said that his immediate family his parents and one of his brothers they have arranged marriages they even had a wife for him but that's not the path that he chose he wanted to choose his own wife he said that um even his family in africa they would send over candidates like he even had some twins that he had to choose from but you know he's not really into the arranged marriage thing which i appreciate you know it works out for some people and it does it for others you know so it is what it is aries and quentin they have a conversation there's a 10 year age gap between the two of them but it's a lot of touching eye locking and connecting going on between the two of them so Obviously, there's something there, and age ain't nothing but a number to them. So, Jessica is talking to Herbert, and she was like, you give me ladies' man energy. And in his confessional, he disagreed that he said, if he was a ladies' man, he wouldn't be there if that's the case. And he really had me cracking up in this scene. It really made me like him and also see why women would be attracted to him because his personality is definitely one that will make you laugh and i like funny guys so it's like yeah you might not be you know the finest guy in the room but if you can make me laugh 
I can really become attracted to you because, you know, your personality is it's funny. I like it. Uh, but, you know, of course, you got to have a balance because I don't like no extra goofy man. Like, okay, baby, everything ain't no damn joke. Anyway, um, Habibi and Sierra, they go on a date. And he's showering her with compliments. And he says that he's judgmental of women who don't get their nails done for dates. And I would be judgmental of men who culture appropriate. So, please, calm down. So... He asked her, do you like me more than the other guys? And she tries to explain. And he was like, "Um, it's a yes or no question. Uh, excuse me? Doing too much. So, yes, she did say that he has her attention, but she wants him to be more serious. So he asked her about her family dynamic. And she said that she talked to her mom every day. So then he asked, what would your mom think of me? And she said her mom would think that he's an interesting person. So they start talking about how she's Creole, she's black. He said that she looked like she could be mixed. And she was like, no, I'm black, I'm Creole. And then they start talking about crawfish. So she was saying how, you know, she learned how to pull crawfish early because her mom was a little slow at it. And he goes and says, your mom ain't shit. What? He said that he was joking. But again, his jokes are in poor taste. And the delivery is super whack. So she ain't feeling it. And at that point, she's ready to go. Rightfully so. Check, please. We get this quick little date between Quentin and Lee. She wants to know more about him. She said that she typically does not date men in the fitness world. But that's the beauty of this journey. You know, you get to experience people that you typically wouldn't. I said, why? You don't like him because he got a thought job. (laughs) But she said, yes, that's usually not her type. So Lee is asking him, does he feel comfortable with the attention that her job brings? You know, being a fitness instructor, having a fit body, being an attractive woman. And he was like, as long as she's being taken care of by him, he has no pressures, honey. He don't care about another man looking. I said, I know that's right. I really do like the slow buildup between the two of them. I really could see something happening there. So then we get down to the ladies lounge. And it looks like it's not at a bar this time. It kind of looked like they're in somebody's living room. But, you know, whatever the case is, they in the ladies' lounge. And they get down to business. Okay, so Tommy wants to know, who are y'all feeling? And the ladies go on to say who they like. So Lee likes Quentin and Mariel, who we really didn't see too much of this episode. We did see him have a conversation with uh, Tequila at the brunch. But we really didn't get a lot of FaceTime with him this episode. Um, Aries also likes Quentin, Janelle as well. Janelle also likes Herbert. And Sierra says in her confessional that Herbert makes her feel tingly. I said, mm, okay, what you gonna break your abstinence for him? Zone do it, okay? Zone do it. Not for anybody on the show unless y'all committed, sis. Zone. Kiara, she said that she likes Red, but she feels like he for the streets, okay? He a thot, thot, thot. Unique likes Marvin, of course. Tequila loves her baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do y'all notice I said loves? I meant to say like, but she likes her baby. You know, she then starts advocating for him, right? She does give a good advocate Sue vibe, okay? The way that she goes hard for her baby. Mm. Yeah, you the new advocate Sue for sure. But you just a little crazier, okay? Advocate Sue wasn't doing all of this that you was doing, but she was definitely putting her best foot forward for Blake. And you put in your whole body for it, okay? You are covering, protecting Habibi with all of your might, ma'am, okay? So she goes into this whole thing about how he's going to school for IT. He has a military background. He DJs. He takes care of his kids. I said, I thought that he only had one kid. She said kids with an S. I don't know. But baby Sierra and Janelle shut all that fake shit down, Okay. Janelle was like, Habibi is an authentic clown, and this isn't daycare. So Tequila ain't trying to hear none of that. She likes her boo's honesty, and, you know, she said that he ain't being fake. So they got to getting into who they're not feeling. Lee is not feeling Marvin because of the whole Fifty Shades of Grey thing. But Jessica, she ain't even really into him. She's more so into the stories because she's nosy. She had me cracking up when she was like, he got stuff under his mattress that isn't money and birth certificates. <laughs> okay, he got he whips and chains, baby. So Kiara said that she's not into quitting 
because she feels like he likes white girls. I said, ooh. Mm, a lot of the other ladies definitely not in agreement. Like, yeah, he definitely gives off that vibe. And she feels like her personality is the closest to a white girl. So, you know, she feels like he probably like her because of that, but she ain't having it. So Tequila was like, you know, I asked him, does he see anybody that he can have a connection with? And he said, none of these women are my type or what I normally go after. So then they give us a flashback of what was actually said. And this fool, she going to ask him, do you think you have a connection with me? And he said, I'm not feeling anyone yet. Okay, mind you, this was at the first mixer. So, yeah, he probably needed a, a moment to get to know somebody before determining that. But one thing for sure, he wasn't feeling you. So because you were rejected, you then felt some type of way and tried to make it seem like he wasn't into any of the women there. And I don't know, it just, even though I know I use, you know, bitch and all of that, you know, I, I say that, but I don't know, something just was not sitting well with me when she was like, you have all these bad bitches here and you're telling me that you're not attracted to any of them. I was like, eh. why you just couldn't say attractive women, bad women? I don't know. I just didn't like, um, mm, mm, I ain't like that. I don't know. I don't know. If I and I'm the only one who was looking like girl, mm -mm. I don't know. Y'all let me know, but I definitely got turned off by that, and it's crazy because yeah, I know I say you know the b word, so I don't know. I just ain't like it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of felt like it's too early for you to be doing all of that. But don't lie on nobody in general. But I'm just saying you talking about he ain't have no connection with anybody. I mean, y'all was at the mixer. He probably didn't have enough time to, or hadn't had a chance to really connect with anybody at that point of you asking him. But Janelle and Lee, they ain't trying to hear none of that. Like, girl, okay, no. Lee said, I'm the chocolatest thing in here, and he feeling my vibe, so please. So Aries said that she does not like Habibi. Sierra says, you know, it's his mouth. Lee does not like his aggression. And Janelle said that he told her off camera, this is the comment that she talked about earlier. He told her, girl, them titties, I'm going to suck them next time. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Totally out of order. Extremely disrespectful. Why did he think that that was okay? I, I just did not like that. And she said that's the reason why she gives off the energy that she gives to him. So Tommy is very upset and he tells them to let him know immediately when any of the guys behave in that appropriate manner. But he was pissed. He said, who the fuck says shit like that? I said, wow, we ain't never heard Tommy talk like that before, but he was not feeling that. So when he was asking that question, Janelle was like, mm, they top talking about all the ladies who was in support of her baby and you know tequila at this point because yes she has definitely uh transformed into tequila she was like yo tops ain't no better baby anybody's top or anybody else is better than her baby thus far okay i'm gonna say thus far because you already know people like to show their ass as the season progresses but yeah at this point any of the men are better than her baby. So, girl, please. And Janelle was like, yeah, none of them have said that to you. And Tequila was like, correct. And that's because of the energy that you give him. Wait a minute. What you're saying doesn't even make sense. So, her baby made a vulgar comment because she doesn't fool with him. I'm sure he said that in a way to be flattering. But, you know, he, he never reads the room correctly. And it's... Is because he's very self-absorbed and very unaware. So I'm like, I don't understand what, where you're even getting at, Tequila. So then she says, she takes it up a notch and says that Janelle's connections are only going for her because of her skin tone. What? What we're not going to do is throw colorism in here in the wrong manner. Because this is not that. If that's the case, everybody would go for Sierra. Everybody ain't saying Sierra's name. So, I mean, you're doing too much. 
you getting rowdy and buck for no reason. Next thing you know, Tequila then got up out her seat as if she was about to fight. So Janelle, you know, she got up as well because you got to stay ready at that point. She getting all rowdy. So Tequila gets escorted out, rightfully so, and then looks at Jessica on her way out and was like, you know, she can get it too. Girl, just ghetto. And you doing all of this for some fugazi nigga with a head wrap. Then goes another step further and says, if her baby gets eliminated, eliminate me. What a clown. What a clown. At that point, just leave and don't come back because he can send home. So then Tequila comes back crying. In her confessional, she's saying, you know, she don't like to tear a woman down, but it's only so much that she can take. You voluntarily put your cape on for a nigga that made an offensive comment to a woman. So I'm not understanding why you're getting so emotional and saying that it was only so much that you can take. <sighs> she need to go home next week. She is a pure clown. So they get back to it. And Sierra says that she's not really into red. And a few of the ladies concur. And Unique talks about, you know, how she said that he was a thought. And, you know, he then called her a thought. You can't get mad because he gave you the same energy that you gave him. Unique really about to get on my nerves with this whole thought situation in red. You are not a victim. You came at him wrong. And he gave you the same energy back. You and your bad wig. Out of everybody on the, on the cast, she got the worst hair. She about to make me mad. So we get down to uh, the bottom two. It's Red and her baby. Kira goes on a date with Red and Sierra goes on a date with her baby. So on Kira and Red's date, he says that he's turned on by her competitiveness. And she was like, well, you know, some of the ladies do feel like you're a little boring. And then she mentioned the thought comment, which we're not going to go over again because it's just so damn stupid. But, you know, he's safe, okay? He, he fought to see another day in the competition. So on her baby and Sierra's date, she said that, yes, she was a little uncomfortable with the last date. He was like, yeah, the energy was definitely off. She feels like he might be overcompensating. Yes, he definitely is. And she tells him what was discussed in the ladies' lounge. She said that the ladies think that, yes, he's attractive, but he's disrespectful and did not leave a good impression on a lot of women. So she was like, you know, even when you said, you know, fuck your mama, that comment was out of hand. I said, girl, he did not say F your mama. He said, your mama ain't ish, which to me has the same effect. But, you know, at the end of the day, he got sent home. Rightfully so. I said, bye, Travis, the imposter, because at the end of the day, your name is not Habibi. I went on OWN's website. And they have some, okay, some of the pictures. I'm like, so out of 18 people on this cast, y'all only have 12 pictures. And not all of the pictures are showing up. I don't know if it's my browser, but they don't have Quentin, Chris, Habibi, uh, Marvin, Unique, or these pictures. That only leaves, what, seven pictures out of 18 people, just ghetto. Like, y'all took forever to do this because I have been checking damn near every day. And y'all just not putting it on here. And y'all don't even have everybody up here. That doesn't make sense. Again, another day at the own headquarters of them being piss poor and lazy. Anyway, yes. So I said all of that to say, yes, they finally put some cast information up. And Habibi's real name is Travis. He is a true imposter, y'all. I just can't deal with him. So, Travis, you and your head wrap can go. Shout out to all the real um, Muslims. I know y'all probably real upset watching this man put on, acting like he he one of y'all. But um, we ain't got to see him on our TVs no more. He took it in stride, but uh, his time was up. So, I'm happy that the ladies did exactly what they needed to do and not waste any more time with him. Yes, they got Brandon out the way. And then they got her baby on down the road next. So I'm proud of y'all. Um, as far as next week's predictions, uh, I would like Tequila to go home. Um, it's between Tequila, 
And if I had to say someone else, I'm going to say Unique. Unique and Tequila are my two girls who I would see in the bottom. Um, y'all let me know what y'all predictions are. For me, as far as the men who is next to go, um, I don't really know. I can't. Marvin is probably the next to go men-wise. But yes, the ladies... I already said who I think. Y'all let me know who y'all think. Let's get down in the comments and talk. This episode was definitely good. It, it, it caught my attention, kept my attention, and all of that stuff. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.